go to Google and type Rathod's IAS. Then you can see our website Rathod's IAS Academy. There you have to click on login or register in the blue color. So if you have not registered yet, you have to click on do not have account and fill the details. So after once you have login, click on the courses. There you can see course list. And in this course list, you can see wide range of courses. Hi, this is Usha. Welcome to Rathod's IS classes. Today in this lecture, we are going to see current affairs of 2nd June 2022. So let's get started with our discussion and let us try to see today's quote. So today's quote is based on education. As you all know, education it is uh, mainly comes under part of our GS2 and this is also one of the favorite topic of UPSC and you can expect essay from this education as well. So be prepared with some quotes regarding this education that you can use in your main answers and even in your essay. Okay, so the quote here is education is simply the soul of a society. Education is a soul of society because it mainly passes from one generation to another generation. For example, if parents, they are mainly educated means they will be going to send their children to schools. Okay, so here this education is, is simply the soul of a society and it mainly passes from one generation to another generation because of this it is called as a simple soul. So now let's try to see the first topic it is regarding death penalty. So this death penalty is seen highly in news and there are a number of debates that are mainly going on in our TV news, uh, TV channels and even newspapers regarding this uh, death penalty. So now let us try to see about this death penalty from our UPSC point of view. So the important things are important and relevant from our UPSC point of view, we are going to see that. So this topic is important from your GS paper to under quality. So now let us try to see this topic in a very great detail. So why this death penalty is in news? So what happened now? At present, there has been an intense, okay, there has been an intense and persistent crisis that is mainly seen in the fairness of administering of this death penalty in India for many decades. So for many decades, we are mainly seeing some crisis. Okay, so we are going to see what are the crisis that we are facing in this death penalty. So here what happened? So from decades onwards, so we are not focusing on the interior thing. We are only focusing on some important criteria regarding imposition of this death penalty. So this is the thing which mainly said by authors. So from decades onwards, we mainly acknowledge in the judgments of Supreme Court of India by former judges, lawyers and as well as researchers, etc. So if you see some details, it mainly says that. So recently, Supreme Court of India, which mainly highlighted that there is a need of holistic there is a need of holistic view of prisoners. There is a need of holistic view of prisoners who are mainly facing this death sentence. So if we are talking about some important details regarding what Supreme Court wants to say. Here Supreme Court stated that for decades onwards. So if you are focusing on this conviction hearings. So we are mainly focusing on only primary details. So we are mainly focusing on only this primary details. So what are these primary details includes? For example, we are mainly focusing on family structure. Okay, the first one is we are focusing on family structure. And second one is we are focusing on educational qualifications. And we are focusing on the work or the profession so and so convict is doing. But we are not taking into consideration like information for example, what is the mental condition of that so and so word, so and so convict, and we didn't take into con, uh, we didn't take into consideration like unfavorable childhood experiences they mainly come across, and we didn't take into account physical and as well as mental health issues, and even we didn't take into account that or uh, like traumatic events and even other social and as well as cultural factors. Okay, we are only taking this primary details like family structure, education, qualification, work. But we are not taking into consideration like mental and physical health and unfavorable childhood experiences and even exposure to traumatic events and even other social and cultural factors. 
so though the death sentence is seen only in the rarest of rarer cases so if you are talking about this bachan singh judgment in that judgment supreme court said that here this death penalty should be given in the rarest of the rarest cases only so if you are talking about capital punishment or death penalty in india so if you are focusing on this crpc criminal procedure code which mainly talks about this death penalty in india so if you are focusing on this capital punishment or death penalty it is a legal penalty for some crimes so we are imposing this death penalty for some crimes under ipc and even some other laws so other laws mainly includes here crpc that is criminal procedure code so this criminal procedure code of 1898 which mainly talks about this death penalty so death penalty will be given as a default punishment for the murder or whenever in some cases here these judges are mandated to give reasons so whenever any court okay any judge who is mainly imposing this death penalty so under this criminal procedure code of 1898 here judge here judge he need to give the reasons why he imposed this death penalty or life imprisonment okay why uh, why they didn't given this life imprisonment why they gave this death penalty they have to give some give some reasons okay that is the thing which should be done by the judge of that court who impose in death penalty and later on 1955 we came up with amendment in this crpc and in this uh, crpc amendment so requirement of written explanation for not imposing the death penalty was terminated okay so written explanation by the judge it is mainly terminated and later on again in 1973 we came up with one more amendment for this crpc so it mainly says that life imprisonment became norm and the death penalty was to imposed only in extraordinary cases especially in some special in some special reasons if there are any special reasons we can go for imposing of death penalty but in many other cases we need to go for this life imprisonment so life imprisonment became norm and death penalty should be imposed in the rarest of the rarer cases or extraordinary cases so this is according to recent amendment that is 1973 amendment to this crpc so if we are talking about some arguments in favor regarding this uh, capital punishment of the first one is retribution so what is the meaning of retribution so one of the important key principle of this retribution here is so people who are doing crime means they deserve the punishment okay so people should get what they deserve in proportion to their severity of their crime so based on the severity of their crime they need to get the punishment and this argument which also states that real justice requires people to suffer for their wrong doing so whenever people they are doing wrong okay for their wrong doing they need to get punishment okay and second important argument which is mainly favoring this capital punishment or death penalty here is deterrence okay so capital punishment is often justified with the argument that by executing convicted murderers that will deter that would be murderers from killing the people so if one person who mainly gave this death penalty and this person mainly executed means so people who want to do that crime they will be having some fear so in this way here we can decrease the crime rate in the society and if you are talking about what are the arguments which are against against this death penalty so first one here is deterrence it is ineffective okay deterrence is ineffective so if you are talking about why this deterrence is ineffective so if you are focusing on this statistical evidence so if you are focusing on the statistical evidence it doesn't confirm this deterrence which is mainly working so some of those who executed may not have been capable of being deterred because of a mental illness sometime because of any defect physical defect or mental illness and even if you are talking about especially how is this deterrence it is not working here because if you are talking about rape okay so death which has been prescribed in the rape cases since 2013 under section 376a of ipc so under this section 376a of ipc so if any person who is undergoing rape means he should be given death penalty but what happens so because of uh, in because of imposition imposition of this death penalty for example 
uh, recent Disha incident, uh, they went for encounter of these four culprits and even Nirbhaya case also, the four culprits who are involved in this uh, Nirbhaya rape case also, they got this death penalty. So, if you see here, whenever we are providing death penalty for the culprits, so whether it will be having impact on the society or not. Yes, they should be having impact. But what happened, recent statistics says that, so even though death penalty which is given for this rape, uh, okay, rape uh, culprits, so there is no decreasing of rape rape uh, which is mainly seen in the society so here brutality of rape which had been increased multifold times so because of this here we can say this deterrent is ineffective so if you're talking about the next argument which is against which is against this death penalty here is execution of innocent so the most common argument against this capital punishment is that sooner or later innocent Innocent people, they may be killed because of some mistakes or flaws in the justice system. So, because of these mistakes or flaws in the justice system, so what happens? So, innocent people, they mainly undergoing for punishment. So, this is the thing that we can see in the number of uh, movies as well. Okay, so the crime will be done by one person, but because of power of money and political power, so one, another people, they will be, uh, they will be mainly facing these punishments right so even according to this amnesty international it mainly says that as long as human justice remained fallible the risk of executive innocence they can never be eliminated okay so this is a thing which mainly said by this amnesty international and you can use this statement whenever you are writing your main answer and one more important thing here is this death penalty had been abolished in number of countries Okay, even developed countries, they mainly came up with abolishing of this death penalty. Why can't India? And next one is there is no rehabilitation. So, whenever we are providing this capital punishment or death penalty, so those people, they will be not rehabilitated. Okay, so they will not return into our society. So, because of this, we cannot go for this death penalty. So, this is about this article in detail. And now, let us try to see next topic. It is regarding community oriented health services so this article which is mainly talking about global recognition of this asha workers so this topic it is one of the important topic i can say so here you need to know about who are these asha workers and what are the role which is mainly played by these asha workers and why they came up with this global recognition so why this global recognition which is mainly given to these asha workers and what are the work which is mainly done by these asha workers in this covid 19 they got this reputation so these are some important dimensions that you have to know so because if you are going to interview so interview the panel may ask you about so recently this asha workers is seen in news so why they are in news so why they got this global recognition so what is your opinion okay so in this way you will be getting questions in your interview okay so because of this you have to know about some details regarding this asha workers to face such type of questions in your interview so now let us try to see this topic in a very great detail so recently world health organization which mainly recognized India's 10.4 lakh ASHA workers, that is accredited social health activists. So accredited social health activists, they are mainly recognized as global health leaders. Okay. So recently WHO, which mainly recognized this 10.4 lakh ASHA workers as global health leaders. So now let us try to understand who are these ASHA workers. So, ASHA workers are nothing but they are volunteers, okay, they are volunteers from within a community and they are the people who are trained, they are trained people and they will be providing information and they will be helping people in accessing the benefits, okay, and accessing the benefits of various health care schemes which are mainly implemented by the government. So, actually these ASHA workers, they mainly act as a bridge. So, bridge between whom? So, they will act as a bridge between marginalized communities, okay, marginalized communities with the facilities, for example, primary health care centers, sub centers, and as well as district hospitals. So, you can draw this type of images like here you can write PHC, okay, sub centers, and here we have this marginal communities, and this ASHA people they will be working as a bridge. 
So in this way, you can represent this type of diagrams. So here you can see they are silly, but this will be working in your means and you can get good marks if you are using this type of diagrams. And these representations will make you unique from other people's representation so that there will be high chance of clearing this UPSC means will be there. Right, so ASHA workers, they are volunteers from within the community and they are the trained people and they provide information and they are mainly helping the people to access the benefit of various healthcare schemes of the government and they will be act as a bridge between these marginalized communities with the facilities such as primary healthcare centers, sub-centers and as well as district hospitals. So what is the role? So the role of these uh, community health volunteers they mainly come from this National Rural Health Mission as it was established in year 2005. And if you're talking about who are eligible to work as this ASHA workers, so ASHA workers are like primarily married people, widowed women or divorced women who are between the ages of 25 to 45 years of age from within the community. And they need excellent communication skills because they need to give the information, right? So they need a good communication skills and they should have leadership qualities as well and they should be literate okay they, they should be literate at least up to class 8 and if you're talking about the aim of this asha workers the aim it is to have one asha worker for every thousand persons or per habitation hilly tribal or sparsely populated region and if you're talking about how many asha workers are working in india so across India, we have about 10.4 lakh ASHA workers and they are having like a largest workforces which are mainly seen in states like Uttar Pradesh, Bihar and Madhya Pradesh and you have to remember this. UP, Bihar and Madhya Pradesh, we are having large number of these ASHA workers because we have populations also high in these states. And if you're talking about Goa, Goa it is a very small state and there are no such ASHA workers which are mainly seen from this Goa. Okay, it is according to this National Health Mission data which is released in this 2019. So, if we are talking about what are the role which is mainly played by these ASHA workers. Actually, they mainly go to door to door. They will be providing door to door services and they are mainly focusing on creating of awareness regarding basic nutrition. So, how they have to feed their children and how they have to take nutrition especially in the women to avoid this anemia. And they will be also explaining about this uh, better hygiene practices and they will be also focusing on what are the health services that are provided uh, okay that are available in that region so they will be providing that information to the people that will be like awareness and they will be focusing on ensuring the women should undergo antenatal checkup so antenatal checkup means nothing but once uh, once a woman she is consumed that means she is pregnant means so every month she need to have doctor checkups or doctor visits so it is about this antenatal care so here they are mainly focusing on even women should undergo this antenatal checkups and they are focusing on this pregnant woman regarding nutrition and they are also delivering some health care facility for this woman and even once this delivery is done that is post birth okay they will be giving training regarding how they can give their out how they can feed their uh, children that is breastfeeding and how they can complement the nutrition of children so these are some important work which is mainly done by these asha workers and they will be also counseling women regarding contraceptive and sexually transmitted infections and next one is they will be motivating children to get immunized okay and next one is they provide some medicines daily to the tb patients okay who are mainly under this dots program that is direct observation treatment of national program and they will be also involved in the screening of infections like malaria during the season so this uh, malaria which is seasonal disease so in so and so this season we can see there is a high number of mosquitoes so actually you know that here this malaria it is a mainly vector which is carrying the this plasmodium here is a mosquito that is female culex mosquito so here we need to go for screening of this uh, malaria during the season and they will be also providing some basic medicines and as well as therapies to the people who are under their jurisdiction for example they will be providing this ors overall rehydration solution though. so this will be very much helpful for uh, diarrhea okay and next one is chloroquine for malaria and iron and some folic acid tablets to prevent anemia in the women and even they will be providing some contraceptive pills for the women okay so in this way they will be play an important role even in the medicines and therapies 
and they get people tested okay and get their reports for this non communicable disease as well and they are also having some task with informing their respective primary healthcare centers about any birds or any deaths which are mainly seen in that so and so designated areas so this is about this topic and if and now let us try to see why why who recognizes asha workers as his global leaders global health leaders because of the work which is mainly done by this asha workers during this covid 19 period so during this covid 19 period everyone had been scared of infection but at that time asha workers they did a lot of contribution to our society for example they went for checking of the people for this covid 19 systems uh, symptoms and even they informed authorities and helped the people to reach the quarantine centers and they explain about the quarantine procedure to the people and they provide the patients with the medicines and as well as pulse oximeter. So this pulse oximeter is very helpful to check uh, our SPO2 that is oxygen which is mainly dissolved in the blood. So in this COVID-19 we see that there is decreasing of this oxygen level and this is one of the important things that will lead to the death of the people. So they mainly came with providing of some medicines like uh, symptomatic medicines. For example, if they are having body pains, they will, they will be giving astaminophen. If they are getting fever, means paracetamol. For uh, uh, for cough, for cough and cold, they will be getting some medicines. So recently, I also get medicines from this Asha workers itself uh, when I suffer from this COVID-19. So because of that, I came in the close, close contact with this Asha workers. But they are very very polite, and they will be doing the service in a very good manner actually. So they will be also motivating the people to get their vaccination shots and they will be also collecting the data regarding how many people they got vaccinated regarding this COVID-19. So because of all these works which are mainly done by this uh, ASHA workers during this critical time, the WHO mainly recognizes ASHA workers as global health leaders. And now let us try to understand what are the issues which are mainly faced by this ASHA workers. So they mainly get performance based payments. They will be not getting a fixed salary like government servants. So this is a, because of this, there is a one issue regarding the finance for this uh, ASHA workers. And in many states, the pay which is very much low for this ASHA workers. And they do not get benefits like pension or any health insurance. So this is also one concern. And they have been, uh, been agitations demanding workers employee status for this ASHA workers. And there is also strong argument to grant permanence to some of these positions with a reasonable compensation as a sustaining motivation. So these are the some important things that you have to remember regarding this ASHA workers. So now let's try to say next topic it is regarding European Union's ban on Russian oil. So this article introduction we discussed in our yesterday's lecture. So now let's try to see this topic this is important from your international relations which mainly comes under your GS paper too. So if you see this article which mainly says that sixth package of sanctions. Sixth package of sanctions. So as part of this sixth package of sanctions since Russia which mainly started invading Ukraine from February 24th onwards. Now European Union and some member states they may reach an agreement to ban 90% of this Russian crude oil imports. By the end of the year, they are mainly banning about 90% of this crude oil imports from this Russia to Europe. So how much Russian oil does goes to this European Union import? So please don't check this information in today's Hindu. I got this information from Indian Express. Okay, I also refer Indian Express. But in Indian Express, I got some more information that is very much relevant. And this will be also important from your means and interview. So if you're talking about uh, Russian oil, okay, how much Russian oil does this European Union import? So Europe, it is one of the favorable destinations for the nearly half of this Russia's crude oil and petroleum products exports. Okay, so this is the thing which mainly said by this IEA International Energy Agency. So European Union, which is mainly importing about 2.2 million barrels per day. Okay, per day, they will be importing about 2.2 million barrels of crude oil in 2021. So it also include even 0 0.7 million billion, uh, 7 million, 0 0.7 million barrels per day via pipeline, and as well as 1.2 million barrel per day of refined, uh, of refined oil products, and as well as, uh, okay, so this is the data which is mainly given by international energy agency so which european union country import the most oil from russia so first one is germany second one is netherlands apart from that even poland they will be also importing 
this uh, oil from this uh, Russia. So Germany is one of the top European Union buyer of this Russian oil. They will be importing like 6,87,000 barrels per day of this crude oil and as well as refined products as well. So this is according to recent in IEA data. So Germany is also the largest European Union importer of Russian pipeline crude as well. And as well as Poland will also import about 3 lakh million barrels per day. And if you are talking about Netherlands, it is a European Europe's key trading hub and is also the second largest importer of this Russian crude. And European Union top importer of this Russia refined products. Okay, so this is about this topic. And if you are talking about what is the rationally behind this imposition of the sanctions against this Russia. So actually you know that Russian economy which is mainly dependent on this energy, energy exports. Okay, so whenever Russia which is mainly exporting oil to this European countries, so here European Union they are mainly paying this Russia in dollars. So every month Russia which is mainly exporting the crude oil and refined products to Europe and they will be paying money. So European Union wants to block this massive re revenue inflow. Okay, so because of this it will be having some negative impact on the financially for this Russia. So European Union has attempting ever since Ukraine invasion that has happened on this February 24th to build consensus on the ways to hurt this Russia economically so that it mainly forced it to roll back its military offense. And if you're talking about some important route here is whenever we are mainly stopping this Russia's energy means it isn't have it it, it, it it isn't very much easy to give European households. So European households dependence on this Russian gas will also be affected here. So what are the important objectives of this European Union here is so to reduce this fossil fuel okay fossil fuel dependence on this Russia and they want to move towards renewables. So this is the first important thing and next one here is here they are mainly focusing on energy security and as well as autonomy strategic autonomy and as well as energy security and member states they agreed to make a start by phasing out of this Russian oil. So this is about this topic and now let us try to see next topic. Title says understanding gun control legislation of different countries. So here we need to talk about gun control legislation of US. So this is highly seen in news. So this article is important from your international relations which mainly comes in your GS paper too. So if you see context it mainly says that US recently witnessed two episodes of mass shooting. So US which mainly came up with episodes of this mass shooting in a span of 11 days. And in this mass shooting it mainly killed more than 30 people including even elementary school children as well. So in 2020 there are about 24,576 homicides. And out of this about 79 percentage that is like 19,384 incidents they were mainly in you they are mainly involved in the use of this firearm. So because of this, this is a very much important matter of concern now. So if you are talking about details regarding this second amendment right. So in 19 in 1791 here we came up that is US came up with this bill of rights. US came up with this bill of rights. So, which is the first 10 amendments to the constitution that was adopted at that time. So, if you are talking about the second amendment, okay. So, this second amendment which mainly talks about right of every citizen to bear arms and ammunition. So, to bear arms and ammunition. So, this second amendment of uh, this, it mainly talks about. Actually, this bills of right which is mainly talks about individual liberties and as well as it talks about specified prohibitions on government power. Right, so here if you see this second amendment which is mainly envisaged as a provision to give a sense of freedom for the citizens. Okay, and it is also talking about their own defense as well. So we are talking about what are the attempts which are mainly made by US government to curtail this, this uh, gun control. So many attempts they were mainly made to bring this gun control regulation but they are mainly failed by this US Congress. And if you see the former president that is Obama, Obama also launched a final attempt through an execution, executive action that is mainly called as King Thompson Bill. 
king thompson bill so you can get a prelims question like so recently this king thompson bill is seen in news so what it is related to it is related to gun control regulation of usa right so if you're talking about what is the way ahead what can be done so u.s congress they must take some efforts to pass this bipartisan king thompson legislation and they can also go for strengthening of this life life saving background checks they can also go for strengthening of life saving background checks and that mainly keep guns out of the wrong hands and they can also come up with a select committee they can also come up with a select committee on gun violence and it could create it to study and report sensible legislation and that can helpful mainly to addressing the other issues and we need to ensure that here children who are mainly having some mental illness they should not have access to the guns and here if you want to bear the gun okay right to bear arms that would become meaningful only with accompanied responsibilities they need to have some responsibilities then only we can make it as a meaningful okay so this is about this topic and now let us try to see next topic it is talking about gst collection that is goods and service tax collection of this may month which mainly jumped to 44 percentage and they collected almost 1.41 lakh crore rupees okay so this article is very important from your economy point of view which mainly comes under your gs paper 3 and now let us try to talk about this topic in a very great detail so if you see context it mainly says that gst goods and service tax revenue in this may month which mainly rose to 44 percentage and they collect about 1.41 lakh crore rupees okay and they got highest number of receipt from this domestic transactions okay from domestic transactions and even service imports as well so now let us try to see some important details our finance ministry mainly said that it is only the fourth time the monthly gst collections which mainly crossed about 1.4 lakh crore since inception of this gst okay so this is the thing which mainly said by our finance minister so why there is increasing of gst collection so what are the steps which are mainly taken so first one is there is increasing of compliance level so government introduced a rule so government introduced a rule according to this input tax credit government came with a rule that is regarding input crash tax credit and this input tax credit will be available only upon timely timely compliance of this gst so whenever they are going for timely compliance of this gst they only get this input tax credit so because of this that led to increasing of this gst filing that led to increasing of this gst filing and second important step which is mainly taken by government is coercive action against the tax evaders who are mainly evading tax who are not paying tax so those people they are mainly comes under some punishment and next one is government also start started using of this uh, technology so enhancing of data analytics and use of this artificial intelligence mainly to detect evasion have been contributed that led to significantly increasing of high collections of this gst okay so now let us try to see what is the impact so whenever there is increasing of this gst collection so what will be the impact that is seen in our in our in, in our in our indian economy so what is the impact so first one is because of this recent increasing of this revenue uptake then we can see like some changes in our policies okay so that will mainly helpful in the revenue that will mainly helpful in the revenue prospects for policy making okay at the center and as well as the states and higher tax inflows they will give this gst council more flexibility so this higher higher tax inflows that will also give this gst council more flexibility to go for rationalization of this gst rate slabs okay so this is about impact so what is this gst let us go back to our basics so gst it is indirect tax GST is indirect tax which is mainly imposed on supply 
of goods and services okay so gst it is indirect tax which is mainly imposed on the supply of the goods and services and it is a multi stage destination oriented tax so here you have to remember it is not a direct tax it is indirect tax and it is a multi stage and it is a destination based tax so it is not based on manufacture so where we are going for manufacturing of goods and services we are going we are not going for implementation of that tax there but it is a destination based tax so this tax which is mainly introduced through 101 amendment act of 2016 okay for the introduction of this goods and services tax regime in india so we are talking about some facts regarding this gst council so this gst council it is a constitutional body so we mainly uh, if you are talking about especially article which mainly deals with this gst council here is article 279a of indian constitution which mainly makes the recommendations to union national well state governments regarding issues related to this goods and services tax so we are talking about this gst council it is a joint forum it mainly contains both center and as well as states so who will be the chairman chairman will be obviously our union finance minister so these are some basic facts and now let us try to see the next topic is regarding caste based census so caste based census to be held in bihar so we are focusing on this context it mainly says that a multi party meeting a multi party meeting which mainly held in bihar which mainly talks about this caste based census they are going to come up with this caste based census they are going to come up in a very soon so if you see details it mainly says that that this caste census it is a procedure of systematically we are mainly acquiring and we are mainly recording this caste wise tabulation of indian population okay so we are mainly coming up with a procedure of systematically acquiring and recording this caste wise tabulation of india's population so if we're talking about why we need this caste based census so first of all we need to go for justification okay to justify the reserve preservation of this caste based affirmative action programs for better planning and as well as targeting this welfare schemes okay we are mainly focusing for the better planning and as well as we need to focus on the targeting of this welfare schemes and we need to provide quantifiable data to support existing levels of reservation so we need to focus on existing levels of reservation and we need to favor uh, the political parties of particular groups or established as a dominant in some specific geographies and uh, to debate on issues regarding disproportionate benefits from the reservation by particular group and we need to address the inequalities in the society so because of all these reasons we need this caste based census so i want to give you one main question based on this topic that is discuss the need for need for and significance of this caste based census so please try to write answer and answer should not be more than 150 words and now let us try to see yesterday's prelims questions so first one is puducherry and delhi are two union territories that have legislated of their own consider the following statements so puducherry can make laws only on the subjects of state list but not in the concurrent list but it is not true it can make uh, it can make laws on the subjects in state list and as well as concurrent list delhi can make laws on any subjects in the state list or in concurrent list except three things that is public order police and as well as land yes this statement is correct and here you need to identify incorrect statements that is one only and next question it is regarding special status to particular state so when the union government gives a special status to particular state what does it imply so budget deficit of state will be bridged by the gov union government next one is large percentage of the central assistance will be uh, given in a grants in aid that is in help and next one is the union government meets entire expenditure of the states during the period of special status the extent of loan or percentage of total assistance will be high so correct option will be 2 okay so here central assistance will be in the large percentage that's it and today's question is the first one it is regarding tribal advisory council so second question it is regarding concurrent list so please try to read the statements and give me the answer in the comment box so before seeing today's hindu ptf i want to make a small announcement on this platform so we came up with this mains answer writing practice course and this course it is of uh, one year 
and the price of this course is 7200 for one year so in this course we are going to give you detailed plan okay detailed schedule of one year and we are going to start writing answers from the day one from this gs1 and once this gs1 is completed we will be moving on to gs2 next gs3 and next gs4 so in this way if you are following this plan that we are giving so i will ensure you that you are going to complete your gs syllabus within one year okay without any doubt so we are going to write at least one answer regarding each and every topic which is given in our gs syllabus okay so there will be evaluation we will be giving you modal answers and there will be practice on essay and as well as case studies on sundays okay and apart from that we also came up with this entire foundational course for this uh, upsc csc 2023 and 2024 and here we are going to provide more than 600 hours of uh, video classes and we are mainly focusing on the conceptual clarity and previous explains and as well as means questions so in this way this course is absolutely beneficial for the students who are beginners and as well as who gave their attempts and the cost of this founders course it is a very very affordable it is just 60000 rupees and the validity it is here is 2 years of course so apart from that if you want to take individual courses like only economy history geography ethics international relations disaster management science and technology environment and ecology you can take those individual courses also so the prices are very much affordable so if you have any doubts or any queries so please call me on this number 8074765513 and if you want to watch the demo videos you can visit our website rathorsisacademy.com there you can see three demo videos which is a free of cost without paying any single penny you can register in our website and you can watch those three videos so after once you convinced with that demo videos then only you can go for purchasing of that courses and this is also the whatsapp number and if you want to text me you can text me on this number and now let us try to see today's hindu newspaper pdf so if you're talking about today's hindu pdf uh, this is the date here is june 2nd and this is delhi edition so first article it is regarding GST collection, I discussed this topic and next topic it is regarding caste based census, I discussed this topic. And if you move forward, leave the city page, there is nothing much important in this pages. And you can directly move on to the states page. So here you can see an article regarding this Rushikonda Hills. So Apex Court set aside this NGT, okay, National Green Tribunal ban on construction at this Rushikonda Hills. So already I discussed this topic, I think 15 days ago. So here we discussed that here NGT mainly imposed the ban on construction at this Rushikonda Hills. So these Rushikonda Hills which are mainly located in this Vishakapatnam, they comes under the part of our Eastern Ghats, right? So what happened now, Supreme Court which mainly, which mainly, uh, set aside this NGT ban on this construction at this Rushikonda Hills. So here you need to know about coastal regulation zone in this topic and you have to know about ecological diversity which is present in this Rushikonda Hills. And if you go to this editorial page I discussed regarding this topic regarding uh, world regarding this world health leaders of this ASHA and I discussed about this death penalty topic and if you move on to this uh, open page you can see this article regarding this NCB must review its procedure soon. It is regarding National uh, sorry Narcotics Control Bureau. Okay, it is regarding allegations of uh, Aryan Khan, who is son of Shah Rukh Khan, regarding this uh, rave party. And if you move forward here, you can see aborting right to choice. So already we discussed this topic regarding abortion rights of USA. And if you see in this text on context, I discussed regarding this Russian oil topic. I discussed regarding this gun control legislation. And there is one article you have to refer that is industry T was signed. How this industry T was signed. So in yesterday's section, I discussed this topic in a very great detail. If you have followed our news analysis and if you have gone through the PDF, then you can understand this topic. Then And there is no need of reading this topic actually. And here today it is 8th anniversary of this Telangana Formation Day. So if you are from Telangana, you have to know about important achievements of your state. That will be important from your interview point of view. And here you can see here India, I in the India I love is multicultural spiritual says German envoy. So this is important from your international relations point of view. And if you move forward here, you can see Bengal government pays homage to singer. Actually one singer uh, named this uh, Krishna Kumar Kunad. He mainly died, okay, so because of this, this is the news. And if you move forward, here in this business page, you can see May Manufacturing PMI, that is Purchasing Manager Index, hints at sustained rebound in the sector. It is according to 
the standard and poor okay that is a rating agency okay so it is like standard and poor global india manufacturing purchasing major index survey so it mainly says that indian manufacturers they won new orders in may at almost the same pace in the april as well okay despite the rising of the prices at a faster rate okay so this is about this topic and here you need to know about this pmi purchasing major index already we discussed number of times regarding this topic of this purchasing manager index you can go for simply revision of that topic and next one is auto sales grow on low base supply chain disruption is so this is also very important and if you move forward in this world space here you can see us to send advanced rockets to ukraine okay so these are some important articles that appear in the today's hindu newspaper i hope you enjoyed this lecture so please subscribe to Rathor's IS Academy and don't forget to enroll to these courses of main dance writing, foundational course and as well as um, individual courses. So many students they have got benefited from this main dance writing course and we will be uploading the details of those students who got benefited soon in our website and as well as in our YouTube channel. Don't worry about it. Go to Google and type Rathor's IS. Then you can see our website Rathor's IS Academy. There you have to click on login or register in the blue color. So if you have not registered yet, you have to click on do not have account and fill the details. You have to give your name, email ID, your mobile number and password. And finally, you can click on this register button. And once your details are filled, then registration will be successful and click on OK and come back and click again on login and register and you have to log in now so after once you have login click on the courses there you can see course list and in this course list you can see wide range of courses so you can see indian his indian society is he's at ethics international relations essay and if you buy all the courses then we will be giving access to all these courses like history economy geography and this is our main answer writing course there you can see different batches are there and this is our prelims test series if you want to watch demo videos you have to click on play course and in history we will be having five modules so there if you want to see demo videos in that so and so part of history you can click on that play course and before payment you can see only three demo videos and after payment you can see all those videos will be displayed on the screen You will Hello be students. having Welcome settings to Rathor's regarding IS. quality and My also Rajesh, speed. I'm your you can adjust faculty. according to Today your the part of the World history lectures. The so most important topic history. in the world history of the UPSC and CSA exam that is the French next, Revolution. Let us try to see other subject. International relations. Click on play codes and the same thing that will follow. Before payment, three demo videos. After payment, every video will be displayed on screen. And you can click on the play button, then full screen, and then settings. So this will be follows to all. Hello, all. Welcome courses. to the lecture. A very important topic we are going to cover up in today's lecture that is Indo-Pacific. Every day in newspaper we are hearing this word Indo-Pacific region, and the important. This is regarding polity, and the faculty is Shashwat Rago, ma'am. Hello and welcome everyone to Rathor's IS. This is Shashwat Raghav, your Polity faculty on this platform. We'll be basically covering our GS Paper 2 and we very well know in GS Paper 2 we have Governance, Constitution, Polity along with Social Justice and IR. By me, your Constitution, Polity and Governance subjects will be covered. In GS, in UPSC site for GS Paper 2, only the subjects have been mentioned, the governance, constitution, polity, but faculties. This is about economy. So economy is taught by servants. So these are some demo videos you can watch like this. An economy Welcome which is like 112 Science. hours of uh, course. Friends, from this class onward.
Hi friends, my name is Sarvan Kumar, I am your economic faculty. Welcome to Rathod's IAS. Friends, in this class, we are going to study about the gross value added. What is the meaning of this gross value added? Now, under this, we have three heads, basic price, right, factor of And next is science and technology you can click on the video and you can click on play button and full screen welcome to Rathod IAS going to the DNA that uh, kind of bank is called as a DNA data bank so you need to create a DNA data bank at a national level okay where the information of all the uh, criminals okay all the suspects okay, So these are the number of courses that you can watch the demo videos and after once you watch the demo videos and after once you satisfied so click on the buy now button and after that you need to enter some details later on you can click on proceed and you can give your mobile number and also email id and finally you can use this razor pay payment system for the purchasing of these courses.